It's Torque, the silent killer. Uh, we just had a drift day, and I got to try out my car. And I'm excited to kind of share some of the things that happened. But first off, let's start out with a good run. We'll call this a good run. Oh, a little bit of front lock there. Trying to get the car to pivot by giving it a dab of foot brake. Hey, <laughs> it's an okay run. I've done a lot of better in the past. <laughs> I've been drifting for nearly 16 years, but. Um, I wanted to show you kind of like a bad run. So what's the problem here? Clutch kicking is kind of bad style. It doesn't look very good, but also it's really hard on the car. You're shocking the drivetrain over and over again, sending just big clumps of power on and off and on and off. It's hard on the clutch, the transmission, the drive shaft, the differential, and even the rear axles. But it ultimately just looks really bad. It's not very good style. So what is the cause of this then what's making us have to clutch kick so much in drifting there's a thing called power to grip ratio so like in drifting you're trying to slide the car around so you got the tire which is touching the road you got your engine boy which is the power unit power unit that delivers the power and so we want that tire to slide but we also like don't want the motor to run away so there's a balance here Where are the goddamn clutch kicks? Here's a 4AG in its natural habitat, making some torque. Let's compare that, like, cause that's my old car, and we didn't need to clutch kick to do runs, but let's compare that to an FA20. So these are the torque curves, not horsepower, but basically how much how much force they they generate at those RPMs. Now drifting doesn't happen from zero RPM all the way to redline. It just doesn't. That's not good style but it's also like not very productive or helpful or even safe drifting so generally it happens in a certain range you can actually kind of see here uh, just over my shoulder where, where we're hanging out most of the time when we're drifting and you'll also notice how that kind of lines up with our graph here this is generally the range that you're going to operate your drift car in most of the time you will go a little bit higher sometimes but most of the time the initiation uh, and just like the maintenance of a drift happens in this particular area and that's where we're seeing a little bit of a problem here the control of drifting and the art of drifting is the control of the rear wheel speed you have the choice to push the car forwards to have it hang back a bit to have it track out or to tighten in this is all done with the control of the rear wheel speed when there is 
an imbalance between the grip of the tire and the power that the engine is making, it, it limits your ability to make those choices or those adjustments. There are workarounds, and we saw those clutch kicks earlier, and those clutch kicks happen because the FA20 has a dead spot in a very critical place. That previous 4AG video, well, you can kind of see, those are the, that's the tire size we were running, and that's roughly my approximation of, of the traction versus torque. There's just enough torque in most of the time in that area to keep those wheels spinning. And even then, it's so close in other parts that often you won't lose the, the wheel speed or you won't lose the RPM. The engine will keep spinning, although it'll start to slow or down or, or drop over time if you, if you let it get too low. But generally, the power to the grip is matched. That's power to grip ratio. The, the FA20, though, and the, even the stock tire size, well, it doesn't really match. There are parts where it's over, but most of the time it's well below. So how the dang heck do we fix this, Quinn? What, what are we going to do to make this better? Well, we've got a couple solutions. We can... Uh, do so uh, really expensive tuning on the engine we or we can like delete the catalytic converter and put in in a tune and put it on the dyno and hope that you're like dyno guy isn't like is cool is not cool i live on a tiny island and uh i gotta find the right dyno guy for me um, most dyno guys are focused on like that final number and i don't really care about that i want that i want that i just care about that little dip um, the other option is that we can change the tire. We can make the tire, uh, well, we can change the grip in two ways, actually. We can change it by having more sideways grip by making the tire wider or narrower to reduce that sideways grip. But we can also change the ratio. Um, there are two ways to change the ratio. We can change the diameter of the tire. The smaller the tire is, the more the torque is multiplied to the rear wheels. We're sacrificing top speed but we're gaining acceleration torque and that'll help us get that wheel speed up or be able to maintain that wheel speed. The other thing is we can change the final drive ratio in the differential and that's not another expensive solution. Either way, this is the reason that so many people like bend clutch forks on their BRZ and FRS. It's actually a thing. There's an aftermarket for upgraded clutch forks. There's an aftermarket for upgraded clutches. Um, there's even, I think, I think I've seen some upgraded clutch arms, like, or clutch pedals, I should say. Uh, the idea being that people are beating the shit out of these clutches just to keep the car sliding. And I don't know if that's the right solution. The quick and easiest one is to make some tire changes, but it's not going to be pretty. It's going to make that, <laughs> make that wheel fitment not super great. So it's kind of a catch 22. Where do I go from here? What do I do? How do I do it? It's going to be tough, but that's their next step here. Oh, and by the way, the spool is in, and it's working fantastic. We've done a couple days on the spool. Spool cutter 2000. Uh, 2020, 2021, the year 3000. You've entered the year 3000. And we got, okay, so uh, the spool sits here. It do a rotate. I got on some bearings there. Then our cutter can slide in and out easily. There's our cutting disc. Now the cool thing is we can then choose depth as well as our cutter gets deep down. Welcome deep down inside. We'll enter into the torch on zone. You've entered the torch on zone. And so as we, oh, we can get really in there. That's awesome. As we rotate, this has a cam profile to it and we can cut into the splines that way. ta dong So now it is just about taking this bitch here, getting her to the right right depth, then rotating her out, give this bitch a spin, cut them out, and then we can achieve our holes goals. Holes goals. We've had no problems at all. I even took the spool out and did a service and a clean on it, put that spool back in and did another track day on it. Things are going great with the spool. So thanks for checking in, and we'll see you next time. Woo! Okay, kind of a shitty run. You gotta get used to the flow and the comfort of the car. We're okay.
temps are all right. underpowered like really really underpowered for even just the like stock tires that we have on the back like I can't roll the throttle I have to clutch kick and it's so hard on the car and so that bothers me my, my power to grip ratio isn't very good yet Struggling, am I okay? <laughs> yeah. Is this, is this not your car? You're borrowing. Your I'm borrowing somebody else's car. Yeah. Anyway, That's what all the clutch kicks are about. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's fair. 